So, how does testosterone influence blood pressure? I am not a doctor, but I want to advocate today why blood pressure is important, and for the young men who might be thinking of using steroids or who may be already using steroids, I want to speak to you guys to explain why blood pressure is so important for your health and how to monitor it safely, closely, in order to live as long as you can. We know that steroids improve muscle mass, libido, physique, confidence, strength, all these things, they do work. But I want to advocate for a safer use model because I do think that for young men who are using steroids or who are thinking of using steroids, you need to be health conscious and it will help you realize your goals whilst also not trying to damage your body too much. I know that sounds weird. Steroids are not going to be good for you. But if you really, really are hell bent on using steroids, then I want to help you do it as safely as possible because it's so important. If you care about your health, which I'm assuming you do, if you're wanting to like look better or you want to improve your physique, then you should also care about the internal. And the internal is your organs, your blood, your cardiovascular system, everything like that. Because internal is what keeps you going. The external looks good. The external does look good. The physique, the six pack, the eight pack, the rippling abs, the huge pecs, all these muscles that look good, the low body fat, but the internal is what's the most important is because if you don't take care of that, then what's the point really? I mean, the heart is the thing that keeps us living and going. And if we don't take care of that, then nothing else matters because we'll be dead. So for you young guys out there, I wanna help you. I wanna help you in the most educational way. I wanna explain over the process of many videos about how to use these drugs safely and really just about how to stay safe in the fitness industry. There is so much stuff out there that's not medically evaluated or not scientifically backed and I wanna bring that science to you. Now, we know a re normal reference range for testosterone is about 300 to 1,000 nanograms per deciliter. It depends who you ask, but about 300 to 1,000 nanograms per deciliter and about eight to 32 nanomoles per liter for total testosterone in Australia, at least, which is equivalent to 300 to 1,000 in America. Now, for young men using anabolic steroids or even just old men, anyone using steroids, we know that you guys will be using far in excess of what you can naturally produce. We know that. We know that because of studies that have shown that anabolic steroid users are not using just testosterone replacement doses. They are going far supra physiological in terms of the reference range because far supra physiological gives you that mRNA transcription to be able to build more muscle. But I wanted to find out just how much naturally producing healthy young males produce of testosterone per day. I found a great study from 1967 which took a bunch of healthy young men and women off the street, just general healthy young men and women may or may not have trained, um, just took them off the street, stuck a needle in their arm for 24 hours in hospital. And I'm thinking who the hell would wanna sign up for a study with a needle in the arm for 24 hours, but apparently people do. Um, and they took blood draws every 90 minutes and they found that young men produce about seven milligrams of testosterone per day. Young women are about 0.35 milligrams of testosterone per day. Now, equivalent per week for the young men is about 49, let's say 50 milligrams of testosterone per week, and young women is about two and a half milligrams per week. Now, young men, 50 milligrams per week. That may come as a bit of a surprise for some of you guys because it certainly did for me. 50 milligrams is like nothing, really. The clinical guidelines for replacement doses in the US is anywhere between 75 to 100 milligrams per week. And I know clinics here in Australia who go way far, far in excess of 100. Like 100 for some people is even a low dose. Some people take 150, 200, 250. Some people are on health 300 milligrams per week and they call it testosterone replacement. That's six times as much as, as a healthy young man in 1967, or at least in this study, was producing per week, like six times as much. So we have to think, what damage is this doing? And I wanted to find out why blood pressure is so important in young men on ab anabolic steroids, because we know from anecdotal evidence and forums and even guys I know that they have trouble controlling their blood pressure on, on even testosterone replacement therapy. And certainly we know that 
guys on cycles have big problems controlling their blood pressure. And the big guys on cycles are, are using not just testosterone, they're using testosterone and non-testosterone derivatives in huge amounts, like up to grams per week. Just look at Dallas McCarver um, and plus other agents like insulin, growth hormone, other peptides, SARMs, pro-hormones, all these things. So we have to think, why is it? Why is this important for blood pressure? Like, who cares? And the reason is we have to care about blood pressure. There's a study that I found, a really good one, that was a meta-analysis of 17 prospective and retrospective studies that looked at young, healthy adults and the relationship of cardiovascular risk, stroke, and heart attack with blood pressure. Now, what they found was that there was a progressive exponential increase of this risk of heart disease, heart attack, or stroke from a threshold of about 115 systolic and 70 diastolic. And you're, prob you're probably thinking 115 is quite low. Like I was thinking it was going to be around like 120, which we always hear is optimal, but they actually found 115. Now, granted the risk from 115 to 120 systolic and like 70 to 80 diastolic is still quite low, but the threshold is about 115. Now I am certain there are bodybuilders out there and guys on steroids and cycles, even testosterone replacement therapy doses who struggle to keep their blood pressure at 115. I know guys out there walking around at 130, 140, 150, 160 systolic, 70, 80, 90, 100 diastolic. You have to think what damage are they doing to their body? If we know that 115 over 70 is the optimal level, then we should be aiming for that. If we're aiming for other goals in life with anabolic steroids, such as physique or a certain body weight or some certain strength goal, then I think the health goal should also be just as important. And 115 over 70, I think should be what we target. We know that uncontrolled blood pressure plus the exposure to androgens in bodybuilders has already probably influenced their left ventricular mass to such an extent that they have a greater left ventricular wall thickness, as well as other myocardial changes in the actual heart structure. If you add the drugs and the blood pressure on top of this, then we're doing damage. We are doing damage, but I think we need to really, really look at health and how we control blood pressure because it is the silent killer. If we look at this study, we know that 115 over 70 is the threshold. And I'm sure there are guys out there, big guys who are using anabolic steroids who just don't even know that their blood pressure is high and who may be running around in life at like 150 and they don't know, these are the guys that I wanna to speak to and these are the guys that I really want to keep safe. But I was curious as to why this was the case because I was thinking if testosterone seemed to increase blood pressure, then shouldn't 17 and 18 year old boys who have just gone through puberty and probably have the highest testosterone they will in their life be running around with hypertension, but they're not. They're not walking around with hypertension at all. And yet there seem to be conflicting studies. Endogenous testosterone seemed to have an inverse relationship with blood pressure in one study. And a second study showed that in men on testosterone replacement therapy, cessation of treatment, so stopping the testosterone replacement actually increased their blood pressure routinely and restarting the treatment seemed to bring it back down again. So I was very confused because there are some studies showing that testosterone increased blood pressure and certainly anabolic steroids in some studies showed a significant increase in blood pressure and yet there were other studies that showed the complete opposite. So I wanted to understand this better and to understand this better we have to look at the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. Very complicated name but basically let's keep it short the RAAS system. I've said system twice there it's actually the S's system but anyway. This is the way that we control our blood pressure in our body and is a primary mechanism for blood pressure changes in the body. Now, if we look at this chart, basically the body has baroreceptors, which are like little tiny beads type things, um, which are located in arteries around the body, but they can sense a loss of blood pressure. So they can sense the blood flow going over it and they can sense a loss of pressure as well as changes in sodium concentration. Now, Angiotensinogen is released by the liver. So that is converted to angiotensin 1 when the kidneys release the enzyme renin. And then angiotensin converting enzyme made in the lungs, ACE, then converts A1 to A2, which then binds to AT1 receptors, 
which then exerts effects such as an increased sympathetic drive, causes adrenal glands to release aldosterone, which increases salt reabsorption and therefore extracellular fluid, vasoconstricts arteries, and increases water reabsorption, all of which drive the increase in blood pressure. So that basically that's the RAS, but my research into why testosterone influences this really started at each level. So I wanted to break down this system and look at each pathway and how testosterone may influence that. I was very confused because the first few studies I looked at, I was just looking at acute testosterone in rat aortas, right? So they took a rat aorta, they cut it cross-sectionally, uh, put it into a testosterone solution, and they actually found that testosterone was a very potent relaxant of the artery within about 30 minutes. So that really confused me, right? So here we had a study that was showing that testosterone was a potent vasodilator acutely, but then we had studies that anabolic steroids induced blood pressure changes, left ventricular changes, and was very vasoconstrictive. I was a bit confused as to why there seemed to be a difference between like acute administration of testosterone and then a chronic androgen exposure. Now, the most compelling research came when I started to look at rat studies. Rats are really good because you can induce certain genetic changes in rats and breed them in order to study things like hypertension. So male rats that they found had higher blood pressure than females and castrating the male rats immediately dropped their blood pressure significantly. This was very interesting. So the key question was why? Why was this the case that suddenly castrating a male spontaneously hypertensive rat seemed to reduce their blood pressure immediately to the female's level of blood pressure? I found a great study that looked at all these different studies, put them together and reported on the findings. And the following findings were why they hypothesized that testosterone influenced blood pressure. There are a number of complicated pathways here, but bear with me. Now, the first reason is that testosterone has a number of vascular remodeling effects. It increases norepinephrine synthesis, which can increase the sympathetic drive in humans and vasoconstrict arteries. It can also stimulate a number of vasoconstrictors that are not related to necessarily norepinephrine, but things like neuropeptide Y and endothelian 1. It also inhibits some vasodilators such as adenosine. Now, by inhibiting a vasodilator, it's stopping the body vasodilating arteries and therefore reducing blood pressure, which actually increases blood pressure. It can also increase thromboxane A2 receptor expression, which is a very interesting receptor that when activated, acts directly on cardiac tissue in the heart to increase heart rate and blood pressure. Interestingly, when in mice, they've taken this gene out of the mice, as in knocked it out, made it inoperable, the mice have actually been protected from heart disease and cardiovascular risk, which I find very interesting. So they're saying essentially testosterone can increase the expression of this receptor and therefore increase heart rate, blood pressure, and cardiac stress. Testosterone has also been shown to increase homocysteine levels in transsexuals, which we know is a key marker of inflammation and stress, and also increase the synthesis of angiotensin II, which is very potent vasoconstrictor, as we know from the RAS, and is a key component of that. Testosterone may also shift the pressure naturoresis relationship to the right, meaning that at equal kidney perfusion pressures, men are actually excreting less sodium which means they're holding onto more sodium, therefore holding onto more water, and it's increasing the blood pressure via a higher circulating volume of fluid. Plasma renin activity is also higher in males and female rats when they have been administered testosterone. They actually found that their plasma renin activity, again, if you go back to the RAS, a key mediator of blood pressure increases, has increased. So they're saying that in rats that are given testosterone, their PRA increases, meaning that more angiotensinogen can be converted to ANG1 and ultimately through ACE, ANG2. What this would mean basically is that if you have more ability to convert downstream, then you're having a greater ability to increase blood pressure and it's just more easy to get that pathway started. So if you just have more of the components of the pathway ready to go, naturally it's just gonna go, go, go and increase blood pressure in that way. The male rats also had higher mRNA for angiotensinogen than females. This was very interesting. So not necessarily that they have higher angiotensinogen levels, but the factors for mRNA production of angiotensinogen are there. 
So what that means, the components to build the angiotensinogen are there already in more and higher quantity, which naturally means there's probably going to be more made. We know that this is the start of the whole RAS, meaning that the pathway of retention of sodium and water for females, and therefore increased blood pressure, is always going to be a bit more easier to start for males than females. And interestingly, enalapril, which is an angiotensin-converting enzyme inhibitor, so ACE inhibitor, reduced blood pressure by 60% in male rats receiving testosterone, whereas in female rats, it only reduced blood pressure by 40%. So that greater 20% increase was probably due to the greater ability it had to inhibit the angiotensin-converting enzyme. And finally, in the kidneys, testosterone was shown to act on the same sodium channel in the epithelium ENAC that aldosterone does, meaning that where aldosterone can promote sodium and water reabsorption in the distal tubules, testosterone might be able to do the same thing as well, in that testosterone can directly promote sodium, salt, and water reabsorption. And so physiologically, at least for blood pressure, anabolic steroids seem to mean men hold more water and sodium, have a greater expression of angiotensin type 1 receptors, have a greater sympathetic drive, through heart rate and vasoconstrictive properties, such as the chemicals that are released to vasoconstrict arteries. And they also have a greater and easier ability to drive angiotensin 1 conversion to angiotensin 2, which can then be a really potent vasoconstrictor and exhibit all the downstream effects, such as increased blood pressure through sodium reabsorption, water reabsorption, vasoconstriction, and all of that. So for the young men out there, I hope I've explained some of the physiological reasons blood pressure can increase on steroids. And the reason why it's so important is because we know that the threshold is about 115 systolic blood pressure and 70 diastolic blood pressure, millimeters of mercury. So what do we do about that? Analapril was shown in the studies to decrease blood pressure significantly, up to 60% in the male spontaneously hypertensive rats. Basically, the way that enalapril works is that it's a class of drugs called ACE inhibitors that inhibit the production of ACE, angiotensin converting enzyme, which basically stop AT1 being converted to AT2. What we can also do is go a bit further downstream in the system and we can actually use angiotensin receptor blockers which work on the AT1 receptor to actually stop anything binding to the AT1 receptor and therefore any substrates that come down to and try and bind to it such as angiotensin 2 are blocked. That's another way. Tomisartan is a great ARB which is an angiotensin receptor blocker but basically the takeaway is this. If you're struggling on anabolic steroids to control your blood pressure, please, please go to your doctor and take active steps to reduce your blood pressure. If you wanna use anabolic steroids, nobody can really stop you. That is a choice that you are going to make by yourself. And that is a choice that if you make by yourself, then that's your choice. No one can stop you using anabolic steroids, but please take it seriously and know the health consequences. One of the biggest health consequences is blood pressure. I've explained the physiological mechanisms as to how testosterone can increase blood pressure, but please, please think about blood pressure and be active in terms of trying to reduce it to that good, healthy 115 over 70 level. We know that good young men in the past few years have died. Dallas McCarver, even Rich Piana, have died from anabolic steroid use. So please think about this. Thank you for watching the video. I hope I've helped you in some way. I hope I have explained the physiological mechanisms that I couldn't really find an answer to online. So I hope I have summarized some of the good studies and research that has come out on this. And I hope I have explained to you the importance of blood pressure. You will definitely be more healthy if you keep your blood pressure in healthy ranges. Thank you.